What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another MMA superstar. Today we get to talk to Aspen Lad, who just got a big win at PFL 10 2022 Championships, where she defeated Julia Budd via a decision. Congratulations, Aspen, on that huge win on your debut at PFL. Thank you. How are you feeling now a few days later? You've probably had a chance to watch the fight, and uh, is it becoming even more satisfying every time you watch it and every time, you know, I'm sure you run into people that that, that have watched the fight? Oh, no, I'm the complete opposite of that. I, I tend to hyper-focus on things I did wrong, and there's some things I did right and a lot of things I can improve on. What would you share that you uh, could improve on? I never – so even – it's kind of hard to describe, but like during sparring or during like um, some fight to reach like, um, for lack of better terms, like a flow state. And I never got there with this fight. And uh, it was more, I don't know. It, I was there, but I could do a whole lot better when I get to that point, but never reached it. But it was still a good fight. You know, uh, I looked at MMA decisions just to see how this was playing out two of the judges already had you up to nothing going yeah. into the third round what if they had open scoring in a fight like that not that you ever go in cruise control or anything but i'm just wondering i'm, I'm starting to ask more fighters how do you think you would have reacted if you looked up or if the coach told you hey look you're up to nothing you know like does that change the game plan like just stay away from her heavy artillery or, or making a fatal mistake no, I'll still go out in the third and try to finish it. But even if you have open scoring, it doesn't mean they're scoring it appropriately. So I have a teammate, Autumn Norton. She was fighting an Evicta. Beat the crap out of this girl for the whole first round. And, like, dropped her a couple times. And then on the scorecard, she was down a round. It's like, how does that happen? So just because you have open scoring, it doesn't necessarily mean all that much. Well, but the open scoring told her she was losing or she was winning? Oh, yeah, no, it told her she was down around, even though she, even had though she was the one beat pummeling. the crap out of the girl. Wow. So, yeah, I think it's valuable to have, but yeah. it's still, pe like, people that don't necessarily make the right decisions are making those decisions. Mm -hmm. Tell me the name of that fight again. I want to look it up and see. Uh, I want to check that one out. It was Autumn Norton. Autumn Norton's last uh -huh. one in Evicta. So watch it and then see. You tell me if you think she lost that first round. It's not possible. Okay. I like to take my medicine when I have to take it, and I like to do it in front of the fighters. I actually, in my staff picks, took Julia Budd. <sighs> I've, I've pretty much ridden with Aspen Lad my whole entire, you know, seeing you all the way since Tough Enough. But I thought, you know what? Okay, I got to be an honest journalist. She is a former champion, and she's been at that weight for a while. And also, Aspen Lad just seems to be going through a lot. Like, this is a really quick turnaround from – everything that happened in the UFC. You proved me wrong, obviously, so I'm here to take my medicine. You were really, really tough here and here. Um, and then you kind of even shared with us, like, this has been a difficult period for you. I mean, yeah, you got yourself into a, an organization that wants you and you want to be with them. Apparently, the money's great. We talked to your coach and all that. So, you know, good for you there. But can you talk about just that this last uh, six months of 2022, what that's been like? It, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. It's been a lot of uh, personal and professional awful things. But after this last, uh, basically the falling out with the USC and deciding that it's time to do something different, since that point, everything has been better. Every single thing has been positive. And it's really just everything happens for a reason. And I don't know if I always believe that, but in this situation, it ended up being completely true. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, fans and MMA have, oh, sorry, fans and MMA media have curiosity. And I don't always think it's because they're nosy. Now, sometimes it is because they're nosy. We're nosy, whatever. But I think a lot of fans and MMA media, especially fans, like to identify with the athletes. We all go through struggles, right? What is there anything you can open up with us, open up to us and to the audience about? You know, the, the personal side, your health. I think you mentioned something about your hair. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, what, 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 if any, you know, and if not, then we move on to the next question. But I thought I'd ask. Well, I'll just say I have an autoimmune, we'll leave it at thing. 
and I won't identify it more than that, but it's dealing with that and everything else. It's been, I felt awful, physically awful, mentally awful, hair falling out. Like it was bad. And obviously since getting healthier, no longer doing drastic, horrible things to my body, I have no longer having any kind of flare ups, but dealing with that when you're a professional athlete, anything along those lines is very, very hard. And it's very hard to ask what we do of our bodies when you're also, your body's fighting itself. But yeah, well, I don't want to elaborate much more into what it is, but that's, that's me. Well, the good news is it sounds like the comeback towards you being a hundred percent healthy is, is it's on its way. Very much so. And yeah, no, I'm feeling better than I have in years. I feel great. And one last thing, and this is, I think a good thing, Aspen. So it, could it, it could have been tying tied into stress, the weight cut stuff? Is that what you're kind of? I'm connecting dots. I don't know, but if so, oh, yeah. then 45 is even looking like a more brilliant move than ever. Yeah, no, it's it's for my health and for more than one reason, and I feel great. Like every fight that I've ever had, for the most part, I'm just trying to recover enough to fight. This is the first time I've actually enjoyed a fight week, and I didn't have that process. It's like I cut like three and a half, four pounds of water, but I drank three and a half, four pounds of water that day. It's like, and I was not hurting. It was fine. I was normal. So it's like, that's a new experience for me and being able to just feel good during the process and enjoy it for once. It's like, wow, this is awesome. We're happy to hear that. Aspen, I wanted to ask you kind of what you just brought up was fight week. Um, you know, everybody's been at a new job and things go a little different, even if you're doing the same thing for a different company, but what was fight league like for you, you know, new people that you're talking to new venue fans, all that stuff. What was, uh, your emotions as you were walking down that stage? Did it feel any different or is a fight just a fight? It's, it was definitely different in the process. So it's all the same stuff. Um, UFC, PFL, even Invicta before that. They all require the same stuff fight week, the same, like you got media, you have obligations, things you have to do and they all require it. But I will say like with the PFL is much more relaxed, like, sure, I had to do it, but everybody's very chill about it. It wasn't militant. And like a fun one was, cause I'm so like brainwashed with like the, the branding stuff with the UFC. Like you cannot do this at a certain time. You can't wear this. They will literally, before you got to Wednesday, like check your underwear to make sure you're not wearing the wrong brand. So oh, I, I was like, like asking people all the time, I was like, Hey, is this, this is okay. It's like, I'm not going to like get fined for this. So there's certain things I need to get used to, but I like how they're more relaxed with their process. And Aspen. So as we're sitting there watching the pay-per-view, um, I was hoping you could give me your thoughts on the main event, because in a way yeah. it has something to do with you. Right. So mm -hmm. um, can you tell us what you thought of the fight and what the outcome does for you? Yeah, no, I thought it was a uh, really great competitive fight. Um, I definitely thought Rissa won. And by the time that it got to the end of it, I was, as somebody watching in a fighter that I, I know better than a lot of people, but I'm still not, I'm not a judge, even though some judges shouldn't be judges. But I definitely thought she'd won that fight. It's an interesting situation, though, because it's not like they've only fought like once or twice. It's, if they rematch, it's going to be their fourth time. And in this situation, a rematch is usually what makes sense. And yeah, it definitely has implications for me, but not in a tournament format. Could I fight either one of those women outside of a tournament? Yes. And I would gladly do it. But obviously the world at large thought Kayla was going to win. So now it's really, what does Larissa want to do? What does the PFL want to do? Do they want that rematch? Do they want to do like super fight type situations? I don't know. So yeah, no, we'll, we'll definitely see on that one. It shook things up and it's pretty interesting. Do you want to do the regular season and playoffs personally over select fights that may involve Larissa or Kayla? I want to do both. So um, if something was to occur before the season or after the season or whatever, we'll see. I would love to do that. But I am definitely planning on going into the season right now. Yeah, because I think the season is, you know, one thing that's really cool about it is I mean, I know it's grueling. It's taxing, right? Mm -hmm. But you get paid every time you fight, you know, and obviously with your injury that you had yeah, uh, and a lot of time in between fights, this would be a good chance for you to um, make some money, you know, and mm -hmm. and kind of like almost plant a flag like, 
hey, I'm I'm maybe one of the big three or one of the big four. We want to include Julia or whoever else they might sign. Yeah. No, I'm definitely curious. I I bet some of their 55ers will drop because they are 45ers. Um, but they're also going to be signing chicks. And with the what's going on in the UFC right now, like we were saying, it, they're getting rid of that weight class. So you're going to have 45ers trying to make 35. They're going to miss. And then the UFC is either going to decide to cut them or they're going to decide to go find something else. So there's going to be a lot of big women on the market, and we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, I wouldn't say big women. I, I think you're all outstanding <laughs> females, regardless of the weight class, incredible athletes. Um, what, what have you heard about 45 and 55 over at PFL? Are they going to have a regular season for both, or what, what, what can you share? The only one I can confirm is the 45. I I don't know what they're going to do with 55, and uh, that could have changed based on this last weekend. Like, that's – I have no idea. I just know 45. Do you know if Kayla and Larissa will be joining you? I highly doubt it. And, like, Larissa just did an interview um, – I think it was with Ariel. My coach was telling me about it, where she's like, nah, this is my weight class. This is my body. I'm good at 55. And – could she still drop? Sure. But I think right now, especially holding the belt at that, it's a, a little bit of a different situation for her. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Well, I, I love seeing the dogs. I was actually going to bring up the dogs because I saw your gram, the, uh, the, the, the homecoming you got when you walked through that door with all three dogs was amazing. I believe this one was the most excited, right? What, what's this one's name? Uh, this is Kylo Ren. This is my boy. Yeah. This is the one that was jumping the most, right? Yep. So the husky and him, they're mine and the other hi baby. The full shepherd, that's my brother's, but I'm the coolest aunt in the world, so he loves me. Now, all three go hiking with you? So my two always do, and then Shaler. Um, I don't know if do you know Shaler. No. So he he's like my uh he's my giant little brother. He's five no as an Ami right now. But okay. we get together at least once a week to go hiking or running with our dogs. So yeah. when he's with me, his dog is with me. But the rest of the time is me and my two. It, just on a complete different pivot, when Kylo Ren was greeting you, do, are those playful bites or do, do they kind of hurt? Because he was getting really excited. You no, know, he's just, it's basically just like holding your hand. Like there's no force behind it. It's just him flipping out. It's like, oh, look at me. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That, was, that's just him. It was awesome. Um, yeah. That 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 was one heck of a com of a homecoming. <laughs> Look how he's chilling. He's chilling doing the interview with us. That's yeah, that, awesome. This is his life. Like oh my god. Like like he had actually just popped up on the couch. What's going on? What are you guys talking? Did did I hear my name? <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much. Because it's like I'm on the go twenty four seven. So if I was to just like leave my dogs home all day, they'd have a terrible life. They go yeah. everywhere I go for the most part. Between <laughs> training, we'll go hike and run. And if I got a warm up for training with running, he goes with me. Like it's a good life. Goes, look at his tongue. I know. That's so funny right now. Oh, my God. Um, and, and you said you just got back from practice, so you guys aren't – you haven't done the hike yet, right? Because it's a daily hike, right? Yes, daily hike, daily run. We ran last night with Shay and my brother. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm coming back from training, and after I get off the phone with you and I think, like, the next two or three dudes, I'm going to go for a hike. Is it still 10, 12 miles, or are you starting to, like, taper down a little bit? Oh, no, no, no. So I only taper down when it's getting close to a fight. We'll drop to like 50 miles a week. But when I'm not training like four or five or not four or five, but I usually t train two to three times a day, get ready for a fight. If I'm only training once a day, mileage goes up. Mm. Uh, here come the silly questions. Any bear sightings lately or any close? Uh, does the compass ever not work? And you're like, where am I? You know, any close calls? No. Um, a neat one was it was at the, towards the end of summer. I actually found three lost people like out in a desolation wilderness and it was late. So I was on a, and during the summer, it doesn't get dark to like nine. And I wanted to see the sunset from a mountaintop. And I was up there, which means I was coming back home at, it was 12 at night. And these people were out in the middle of nowhere, just lost and crying and shit. So you find interesting things. And as far as bears go, I haven't seen one in a while. I haven't seen a cougar in a while. So, yeah, we're doing pretty good as far as the large animal spotting. That's crazy. Um, finish that story, though. So did you assist them in finding their way back, the, the the group? Yeah. So I was coming down. It was – so the mountain I was on is still 10 miles back to the car after sunset. So I had my headlamp out on my gear, and I know where I was. I was going back. 
And I just see like these three lights, like way off to the side, like th th they shouldn't be out there. And I didn't have my headlamp or anything on at the time, but I turned it on and then they start like coming towards me like a beeline. It's like, all right, this is going to get interesting. And uh, they're, they're just shaking their head. No, no, we're not okay. I was like, well, where are you, where are you trying to go or where are you coming from? And the place they told me was like 10 miles away in the other direction. It's like, do you need help getting back to your car? And it's like, yes, yes, we do. So I basically just let them out for the last six miles and then they got in their car and they were okay, but they were very stressed out. Wow. Um, what age is kind of? They were young adults, like early 20s. There was two men and a woman. Woman. N not speaking English, and like, like they yeah. were just foreigners hiking in Cali or something like that? Yeah. So the people the people got safe. They, they were safe and, and the story ended in a good in a good way, right? Yeah, no. The, we all got to the car. And they, they were fine. But yeah, no, it was just a weird... Yeah, that area, there's nobody. It was 12 at night. It was desolation wilderness. And it's like... If you're, you're either out there, you know exactly what you're doing, or you've done fucked up, and they were of that group. Aspen, let me ask you something. If that ever happened to, to me, what do you do if you're lost? Do you just stay put, or do you keep walking? Like, I don't know if you're exhausting your own gas tank at that point, you know? So, always tell somebody where you're going, period, so you have a backup, and regardless. And don't, if you get lost, just sit your ass there and wait, because that's a lot of the issue people have. They start wandering. And then people they they get they get they won't won't get found. So yeah, make sure you've told somebody where you're going. That will check for you after a certain time period. And if you start getting lost, stay where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask you about was you know you're very reserved, professional, humble. But I did see that comment about you. You know, you're comparing your resumes to Larissa's and Kayla's. What made you say that? I, I looked at both ladies. And I thought Larissa's fought formidable opponents, um, Kayla as well, but Kayla's is more PFL oriented, whereas Larissa's had a mix of some of the talent in UFC and, he, and even Irene Aldana and some show in Brazil or something like that. But uh, what, what was that just you kind of like, you know, pushing buttons a little or? A little bit, a little bit, but yeah, no, they fought, they've had good fights, but as far as uh, the competition level, I know who I fought and I know how I've done against certain people. And uh, yeah, it was, I think it was, I forget what the question they asked leading up to it. I really do, it was, a, it was a hot moment. But yeah, a little bit, just push buttons a little bit. Like basically, I think they're asking you wanted this fight or how do you think you match up in this fight kind of thing. It's like, well, let's let's do it and find out. Yeah, all right. Well, we don't want the phone to overheat. I know you got more media to do. And uh, I, I guess I got out of here unscathed. I thought for sure you were going to call me a big old dummy for not taking you in our staff picks. Oh, no, <laughs> I, I definitely, make, you know, I thought about it as like, what a traitor. But, you know, it's okay. I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> hey, have, a nice this day. <laughs> have a nice day, both of you. And um, thank you so much for doing the interview. Congrats on everything. I'm glad everything's turning around professional-wise, personal-wise. That's awesome. And I hope you have a happy holiday season. Thank you for having me on. I'll talk to you again soon, and we'll see if you choose to bet against me again, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you, Aspen.